everybody. Uh, today's lesson is really a follow-up to what we covered yesterday. So the first two or three boards are going to be identical, just as a little reminder, in case anybody is here who wasn't here yesterday. Um, so let me pull up the cards. We're going to skip a lot of yesterday's cards, uh, deals, don't worry. It's not a complete revamp. Okay, so uh, let's begin. This will be very familiar. It will go very quickly to start off with. So One Heart by Kathy. Can everybody see all the cards? No. Uh, I'm going to let the table see them. Maybe I should really test these fine players, <laughs> uh, these experienced guinea pigs. Um, so looking at the south hand, I've got a um, three, six, 10, 11. I have a, a four card limit raise. I'm going straight to three hearts. Okay, so no problems with that. Okay, we'll go on to the next deal. This one heart, three hearts is one of the most standard bids in bridge. Four card limit raise, 10 to 12 points with four trumps. This is actually the worst possible hand to have for that because although I've got four trumps, I'm four triple three, I have no roughing value whatsoever. It's an ugly hand. <laughs> So this time, North and South have swapped hands. So Kathy is going to pass. And I'm going to open in third seat, one heart. The opponents have to pass. And now Kathy's going to bid three hearts. And that's fine, except that what if I opened light? So let's look at the same hand again and bid it with Drury. So we've just learned Drury. Uh, it's going to go pass, pass again very quickly. One heart by South. And now this time, Kathy's going to stop and think. And she's saying to herself, oh my gosh, we've got a great fit. My partner opened in third seat though. So I have to be careful. She might have opened light. What was that bit that we learned? Two clubs, Drury. Partner, I have a limit raise. Do you want to go to game opposite my limit raise in support of your suit? And now when it comes to me, I've got three, nine, 12, but my hand grows up because of the singleton. Now, I like to count um, one for a doubleton, two for a singleton, three for a void. I've always counted that way for many, many years. And it's not bad. Now, Debbie, a few minutes ago, she quoted five for her void. So I guess it's whatever turns you on. I'm naturally conservative. A lot of other people are naturally aggressive when it comes to bidding. And that's just who we are. And a good partnership makes allowances. When I play with Bella, um, Bella is overly aggressive because she knows that I'm naturally conservative and we usually get to a good place. When I play with Neil, Neil knows that I'm conservative. In fact, what he said to me recently was that if I, if I think about a bid and then say, no, I'm not good enough, just take the bid anyway. And if we get bad boards because I'm overbidding, he'll tell me soon enough. So that, that I'm trying very hard to be more aggressive, but I'm not gonna count more than two points for my singleton. Nevertheless, I've got a nice hand. How many losers? Two spades and one heart is three. A club is four and two diamonds is six. When, when partner shows me limit raise values, they usually have eight losers. So I'm gonna take the push. I'm going to bid four hearts. The losing trick count tells me my point evaluated point mm -hmm. tells me 
to go and the fact that I have a singleton tells me to accept the invitation. All of these things, things, and I usually think of all three, lead me to accept the invitation and bid the game. Okay, so the next hand we're going to do is we're going to skip a lot of the stuff that we did yesterday. I have to quickly redeal them because I have no way to jump around. So I think this is the hand that I want next. Okay. So just to reiterate that um, opposite a third seat opener, responder can bid Drury. So yesterday we only learned to do that. We didn't know whether the partner had a three card limit raise or a four card limit raise. Today, we are going to distinguish between them. Okay. Oh, do you want us to see all the cards? Is that okay? Yes, definitely for this. So one spade by Marissa in third seat. Now let's look at Judy's hand. She's got three, four, eight, ten maybe 11 with that doubleton diamond. So two clubs, Drury. Now, if we choose to play two-way Drury, this two club bid says that she has three trumps. If she had four trumps, she would bid two diamonds. So I looked it up this morning and this is the standard way that clubs always promises three card support and diamonds always promises four card support. So if you um, already play Drury and you want to consider two way, you would have to agree with your partner that clubs is three and diamonds four. And because some people play it the opposite way around, if I'm playing two way Drury, I always write on my convention card what my agreement is with this particular partner. Um, I don't, my video is barely on, but if I hold up my convention card, you can see that I've got a whole lot of convention cards that I play with um, several people. I have different partners almost every day of the week. So I've got five or six regular partners that I play with and a lot of agreements. Sometimes the whole of the inside page, um, if I show you this, oh, that's not the one. I'm looking for my card with Molly because the inside of my Molly card, which I photocopied is full of writing on the inside of all our little agreements. And when it comes to Neil, I have a whole book. <laughs> this is my book with Neil. Um, you can see it's a whole book Full of, I'm up to about page 60 something in the 50s of our different agreements. So if you're a serious bridge player, the convention card alone often isn't really quite enough. So always make an agreement if you're playing two way that clubs promises X and diamonds promises Y, however you're going to play it. But the standard way is that clubs promises three card support. So now what is partner going to do? Six and five, oh. 11, 14, plus a singleton, we're definitely oh. going to go. Yes. Have we ever been in game in an eight card fit? Of course we have. So it's perfect. Thank you very much, partner. And you can see that we've got no spade losers, one heart loser, no club losers, and a um, couple of diamond losers. So it's sounding pretty good heart and two clubs by the look of it, two diamonds. So now let's look at the next one. Four, six, 10, 11, not enough to open. I'm going to pass. Um, so look at this. My partner opened one heart in third seat. I've got this lovely hand, but 
but um, Judy has doubled, Judy in the East Seat has doubled to say, bid any suit except hearts, I make the perfect dummy. And she's got a really nice hand. So how can I show this hand? Well, I've got lots of ways to show it. I certainly want to show my partner hearts. And I've got four trumps. Um, what, what's my best choice of action? Well, four, six, 10, 11, I could redouble to say that I've got 10 points. I could bid Jordan to no trump to say that I've got four trumps and at least 10 points. But, but she might have opened really light, which is possible, especially considering that Judy's got a full opening hand. So if Judy's got a full opening hand and my partner has a full opener, Judy's partner, Marissa, has diddly. But what's my best bid? Well, I have an agreement with most of my partners that after the double, Drury is still on. But this time I have four trumps. So I can bid two diamonds. To say, partner, I want you to bid Drury. Now you have to have an agreement for this. Because otherwise, normally after a double, a new suit at the two level is not forcing. So if we agree that Drury is on over a double, if partner opens a major in third seat, that's fine. If I had a whole lot of diamonds and no fit in hearts, I could pass, or I could maybe jump to three diamonds. So we really have to have agreements as to how we're going to handle this situation. If, if Judy didn't bid, then I have a clear cut two diamond bid. Excuse me, that's a question. The two diamonds, do you have to alert? Yes, it has to be alerted. Um, here's the easy way to know if things should be alerted. If the bid does not mean what it sounds like, we have to alert it. This is a secret code bid, nothing to do with diamonds. So it must be alerted. Face to face, my partner would alert. Here, I would alert. Now you can only, I can only bid two diamonds if it's our agreement that Drury is on over interference. In fact, I used to have a little mantra. When two clubs Drury is not available, double is Drury. And that was very popular up in New Jersey, in the Northeast. It's not at all popular down here. Here, people don't seem to know what they should be doing. And frankly, things are really dire at the moment because of BBO. I shouldn't say because of BBO. Um, BBO is wonderful but we don't have time to catch up with our partners and talk about our agreements between rounds or after the game, it's just too difficult. And, you know, we haven't been socializing. Well, I don't know about you, but I haven't been socializing with my bridge partners. Uh, I used to be in a group that we would always go out and, you know, go to some nice place and, and have um, nibbles and a nice drink and go over the cards, go over the boards a great way to improve anyone's bridge. And we could catch up on what went wrong and, and our bidding misunderstandings and establish good agreements. Not so easy to do here, even with the best one in the world. Thanks for the game, bye, see ya. And we don't interact until a week later when we have our steady game. So all of this, you need to have good agreements. So right now I'm going to uh, ask Judy to undo her bid. Oh, okay. I'm going to undo it. Need another another. Oh, don't okay. okay, so one heart pass. If Judy chooses to pass and see where this is going and come in later, now I will bid two diamonds, Drury. So I'm going to say four card limit raise, and that would be a perfect explanation for my two diamond bid four card limit raise. Now, West is going to pass and Judy might, be, might work out that she's now pretty happy that uh, she didn't make that double because her partner's got diddly. And now what is, what is North going to do? She's got five, eight, 12 points. 
but she knows I've got four hearts. So what a difference here. She's got 10 trumps. How many losers does she have? Two spades, two hearts is four, two clubs is six and a diamond is seven. Seven losers. I rate to have eight, but maybe something good will happen. So she's taking a chance. And as Ron Klinger said yesterday, um, you know, I can't remember the exact words he said, but you can never expect success all of the time. But you'll have success half of the time. So are we going to make it? Well, we always have to lose the two spades, but our heart loses, no problem. And we have to lose no diamonds. We might have to lose a club but we'll get rid of one of our clubs on the diamond. Not so good. We might go down. There's a question going back to the previous hand. Yes. This person wants to know why two diamonds is preferable to two no Trump Jordan in that particular circumstance. Because your partner opened an 11 count or I've seen people open nine counts in third seat. Um, we, two no trump is too high. So the whole purpose of um, these bids is to allow third seat to open quite light. So we, we, all, we all have learned along the way that we can open 11 point hands in third seat. And it could be a really bad 11. So if I've got 10, you've got 11, and I've been two no trump and forces to the three level, it could be really bad news for our side. So we want to steal little part score contracts, but we don't really want to go much higher than two unless we've got good values. So that's the reason why Jordan was not, not the best bid. What have we got here? Oh, this is the hand that I said I've got the 4441 bid for you. Okay. Hmm. Okay. okay, one spade passed by me. Um, because I have four and 11 points, I say two diamonds. Is that there? Yes, four, four with a four card limit raise. Four card limit raise, yes. yes. Nothing about diamonds. Uh, let's see. Hold on a second. <laughs> Should, uh, I don't know if I should do four no Trump. I think you should. Yeah. So this is excellent because that's how the losers um, in Judith had. Now, I think many of you came to Ron Klinger's talk yesterday. So let's see how many losers that Judy has. Two spades and one heart is three, one club is four, and a diamond is five. And Marissa promised a limit raise, so maybe eight losers. So five and eight is 13. Deduct that from 24, and the answer is 11. So um, this suggests that we can always make 11 tricks, and maybe something good will happen and we'll make 12. So for no trump, even if she doesn't have what we need, there's a very good chance that we'll be able to make five spades. So let's bid four no trump and see. So the, the, uh, the losing trick count can really help us here. So four no trump asking five clubs. No, we're in, uh, we're in spades. Oh, that, that's right. I beg your pardon. Five spades, five clubs, one key what card. Key card. <laughs> do, I base, do I bid based on what I see? No, you bid according to five clubs. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new bridge we play, transparent bridge. <laughs> Good one, 
Marissa. <laughs> would have been six spades regardless. Well, I'm missing one key card. That's true. Okay. I think you should, you might want to ask about spades. See, even though we can see all the cards, we, we must bid according to the auction. She has one or four, it's not four. So Judy's got, uh, she's got three herself and her partner's got one. So that's four out of five. There's a good chance of making six spades. Okay, so what, what should my hand lead? I'm gonna lead the Jack of Hearts. We have to pass. Heart lead. On a heart lead, how is this going to go? Well, we have no heart losers. Mm -mm. We have to find the queen of spades. Yeah, and I'll go. <laughs> and the ace of cups. So this slam is on a finesse. It's not a good slam. You might pick up the queen if you're lucky. You have to decide how you're going to play it. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's only one way really to play this. The drop? Well, it's, it's going to drop. <laughs> so now everybody followed. So now you have to, to pray. Okay. And now you're going to give up the ace of clubs and you can take everything else. Okay, yeah. so a nice slam. No, you, you're not, you have to lose a club, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> Marissa was supposed to remind me. Would you double on that? Absolutely not. I shouldn't think so. <laughs> okay. Double says you have an opening hand. You have a nine count. But but about spade singleton. That makes you about eleven. <laughs> How many okay. tricks do you have in your hand? Uh, none, none, none for sure. None. none for, what, a great no. bid. what a great bid to make a take up <laughs> double with the inability to win a single trick in your hand. Your partner will do everything wrong on defense because she'll be trying to find you. Okay. So I think it's better if you pass. Okay. Now let's look all, all look at my hand because here's the point of today's lesson. We've seen what we've done so far. Two-way jury. We can show bid clubs to show a three card limit raise or diamonds to show a four card limit raise. And we managed our way through those quite nicely. Now, I have one partner who introduced me to what I'm going to call three-way new minor forcing. So this is, this is for the brave at heart. And you should master simple jewelry before you even think about two-way. And it'll be a long time before you think about three-way. So what are the three possible ways? Well, let's look at my hand. I've got nine points, but I have four trumps. So I know that some people play Bergen and they have a way to show this hand. I think in Bergen, um, I could jump to three clubs to show this hand and three diamonds would be a limit raise um, opposite of first or second seat opener. So, but with this hand, I've got a way to show my partner exactly what I have. So one spade, two spades would be six to nine points with three, with a known guaranteed three spades. But here I've got four spades and I've got eight or nine points. I've got four, six, nine points, high card points. So I'm going to bid two clubs and watch what I write. Four spades, eight to 11 points. I think anybody will recognize eight to 11 means my card points. 
So this immediately tells my partner that I've got four possible Trumps. I've got four guaranteed Trumps, I should say. And I've got eight to 11, which is a broader range. So if she wants to say, well, which hand do you have? It's nice to know you've got four Trumps because I might have to rough a lot of clubs. But which hand do you have? Do you have the eight or nine or do you have 10 or 11? So can anybody guess how she asks me that question? Mm. But it's the cheap, no Trump? It's the cheapest possible bid oh. available. Two diamonds. Two diamonds says, which hand do you have? So now I'm going to be two spades to say, I've got exactly eight or nine points, but I do have four trumps. So now my partner can decide what they want to do. Well, it'd be nice if I had the king of spades, but that's a hefty three. I'd only have five more points. So she's not really sure what I've got, but how many losers does she have? One spade, three hearts is four, and two diamonds is six. It's up to her. I, I tend to promise nine losers. When I've only got eight or nine points, I tend to have nine losers. I've got three spades and one heart is four, two clubs is six and two diamonds is eight. If she wanted to invite me, I would accept because I only have eight losers. Here she's just barreled regardless. Maybe it's because she can see all the cards. <laughs> She does have, she's got, does have a nice hand with 16. But the comforting thing here is that she knows that I have four trumps. So hopefully I've got the king, but in any case, she will be able to trump any losing clubs in her hand. If I've got clubs myself, if I've got the king queen, well then she can get rid of her diamonds or hearts on them. So it, it's, it's not a terrible bid. She's only got six, and there's a chance that I might have uh, no more than eight losers. Okay. There are several questions. Yes. <laughs> okay, first, uh, this person says, I do not understand how this particular bid shows four spades and not three with 10 points. Because it's by agreement. We have an agreement that we are playing Molly, if this is Molly O'Neill, Molly and I are playing what I'm calling three-way new minor because I can show oh. four trumps with eight or nine points, four trumps with 10 or 11 points and three trumps with 10 or 11 points. So I've got three possible hands. So clubs shows always four trumps and a broad range of eight to 11. And my partner can ask me which hand I have. And a second question. Mm -hmm. On this board, I would be tempted to overcall my five card club suit if I were the right hand bidder, not double. That's if you had seven. Just a Are you talking about the east hand or the west hand? I believe he's talking about the East hand. Okay. Well, I think that's a very weak overcall. We need at least 10 points to overcall a suit um, at the two level. And um, that's number one. And number two, we have no winners in that suit. We're missing the ace and king. So what's going to happen is that when partner leads a club and you can't win the trick, He's going to be trying to reach you in hearts and diamonds and all of those cards are going to be gobbled up by the opponents and you're not going to win any tricks and your partner's going to be on defense your partner's going to be really unhappy with you and your partner's going to start screaming what is wrong with you why would you bid such a crummy suit <laughs> at the two level for heaven's sake and it's spanish <laughs> Um, so we have to be very careful. Our overcalls should be lead directing overcalls. Oh, okay. 
and they ought to be headed by at least the king, not the Queen Jack. Okay, there are two more questions. Okay. If you had seven, seven points or under, would you just bid the two spades? Yes, if you have seven or less with a fit, you would just raise. So the, this two club bid by agreement starts at eight. And the eight to 11 points is divided between eight, nine or 10, 11. And another question, this person is asking you to go back because he or she missed. What is the bid with three cards and 10 points in this sequence? Two diamonds. Two diamonds is always a three card limit raise. Once we're playing three way, it's diamonds is always the three card limit raise. Okay, 11 points I'm going to pass. So what do I have this time? I've got 11 points and I've got a three card limit raise. So this time I'm going to bid two diamonds. And this is a three card limit raise. My explanation comes up in the box, two diamonds, three card limit raise. So what's my partner going to do this time? She's definitely going to four hearts. Well, let's have a little think about it. When I have a limit, when I show a limit raise, I likely have eight losers or less. How many does North have? One spade, one heart is two, one club is three, and a diamond is four. So four losers, and I probably have about eight. So eight and four is 12. Take that from 24, it suggests that we might be able to make 12 tricks. Mm -hmm. So instead of four hearts, we might want to bid four no trump. So Kathy, I think you can bid four no trump to ask how many key cards do you have? And this time I have two. I've got the king of hearts and the ace of diamonds. So I have two, but I do not have the queen. So my answer is five hearts. And now we've she's got two herself. So what do I have? If I've got the ace of diamonds and the ace of clubs, then slam is on finding the king of hearts. If I have the king of hearts and one of these aces, then she's only going to lose a diamond. Let's say I have the ace of clubs, she'll lose a diamond. If I have the ace of diamonds, she'll lose a club, but then she'll have control of clubs. So this looks like a pretty good proposition for six hearts. So Marissa's going to pass. Six hearts by Kathy. And Judy's probably going to lead the 10 of diamonds. Mm -hmm. And um, the hand is all win the ace, pull trump, three top spades, knock out the ace of clubs, and everything is good. Making six very handily. So a great way for South to show their fit opposite this, this third seat opener. And I put all the hands in third seat, but they could just as easily be in a four. I like to play jury over both third and fourth seat openers. Okay. A question? Yes. Uh, how would partner know if you're doing two or three way? because whenever we sit down to play with any partner, we agree our systems before the first board comes out. So this is why we have convention cards. 
And I recommend that if you're learning or adding a new convention, you go out of your way to remind each other, remember, mm. we're playing Drury. Remember, third or fourth seat opener, we're playing Drury. Don't forget, I know you've got a tendency to fall in love with your clubs and big natural clubs, but I'm going to think it's Drury. Are we all clear? Are we clear on this? Are you ready to play it today? Now, when I play with some students, we, we get on the phone before we sit down at the table and we clarify that, yes, we're playing controls over two club openers. We're doing this, we're doing that, but we're not ready to do such and such. And basically any bridge partnership has to do that every time. When you really know your card and you're not changing anything, that's fine. But when you're playing with a new partner or you're adding a new convention, you have to remind each other that that's what your agreement is. Okay, any questions or comments? I think this might have been the last hand in the set. Maybe there's another one. No, another one. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a question going back to hand on 11. Instead, could you have been using two-way? Sorry? This person wants to know if you could have been using two-way. You, you can use whatever your agreement is. You can play simple Drury. You could play two-way Drury. You can play three-way Drury. You have, have all those choices. But my recommendation is that you play simple reverse Drury, as it's called technically, um, until you've really got it under your belt. Okay, we, we are practicing three way Drury, no? Correct. Okay. Oh, we have to allow it. Um, yes. Um, yeah. mm. Okay, two, see how Marissa wrote this down? No, no, it, no take so out the limit raise. This is not really correct. Oh yeah. It's four, four spades, eight to 11. Okay, okay, wait. Okay. If I can, can rewrite it. No, I cannot. I cannot. Okay. Don't see a way to get this. Sorry. Okay. No problem. Okay. okay. So, all right. So that's not quite right. So we'll correct it next. Wait, time. wait, wait. I can't. I can't. I can't. Uh, here. So yes, it on, on four trumps. On four trumps. Whoops. <laughs> if you hit explain, it'll change it. Yeah. yeah thanks. Thanks, Paul. I'm there. Just think, okay. okay. This is an eight to 11, four trumps. Perfect. So now these ladies are very good. Judy's bid two diamonds, asking for more information. Which hand, is it the eight or nine or is it 10, 11? Um. It's the eight, nine. Okay. So Marissa rates to have nine losers. Three spades and a heart is four and three clubs is seven and two diamonds is nine. Oh. Judy has two spades and two hearts is four and a club and a diamond is six. So she's got a quite a nice hand, but opposite nine, it's unlikely that we have a game. Okay, so she's signing off in two spades. That will end the auction and my hand is on lead. I'm probably gonna lead the queen of clubs. So, how is, how is she going to make it? Well, on the lead, she's getting the king of clubs. 
mm -hmm. either now or later. She's got to lose a diamond. So that's two. No hard losers, but she's missing the ace and queen of spades. So if I have both of them, she may lose both of them and make three. If she can pick up the queen, she might make four. So have you ever made four when you're not in game? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes I've made five. Mm -hmm. So twice mm -hmm. I've made six. But the losing trick count certainly helps us find some games that other people didn't think about. But at least here, we know what our partner's hand is. Okay. I have two questions. Let's go ahead. Okay. The first one is, is it just high card points or should you count distributionals also? Well, we should always evaluate our hand. Um, the responder should always evaluate in terms of distribution. Now, I always believe that the opener can't count distributional points because, for instance, to say, well, he's got his hands worth more because he's got a doubleton club and a doubleton diamond. If we've got lots of high cards there and he has to cut down his trumps, he's going to be in big trouble. But the losing trick count gives him an idea of how high to go because we know from the bidding that his partner likely has nine losers. A limit raise is likely eight losers, and an opening hand is likely seven losers. So when we put this together, Judy counted one, two, three, four, five, six losers. So she's got a better hand, but opposite nine losers, it's unlikely to make a game. So I think I've told you before about my partner, Janet. She bid game every time we had a fit. And when game was making on unlikely you know, hands, we always got a very good result, but we got a lot of bottles when game wasn't there. <laughs> but she, that was her style of bidding. Oh, guess, well, we've got a fit. I guess I'm going, she would say with a little smile, a little laugh. <laughs> so, yep, we have a fit, Rosemary, We're, I'm going. <laughs> There are times I wanted to send her going right out the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I'm not sure. This one might be me, right? I don't think this is it. I think we finished our set of deals. So that's my presentation yesterday and today on the joys of the jury bid. If you don't play it, I urge you to learn basic jury. It's a really, really good bid. And I think my little elf is posting yesterday's lesson and hopefully today's um, to YouTube. So you'll be able to find it there. You can also Google reverse Drury and you can see many names that you know, Robert Todd, uh, Larry Cohen, um, Wikipedia, Karen Walker, uh, a lot of names that I'm very familiar with and you probably are as well to see what they have to say about things. Okay, well, let's, uh, I can see that Judy's anxious to bid. So I'm going to hide. Oh, Judy, we have seen all the cards. <laughs> that is over and done with. <laughs> now I am going to say that I like to overcall a spade here. Um, I don't have a full opening hand, but I have five nice spades. So I'm going to overcall the spade. My overcalls are 7 to 17. It was very interesting yesterday to hear Ron say that overcalls usually have around eight losers. How many do I have? One spade and two hearts is three. And three clubs is six and two diamonds is eight. Huh. So I never really thought very much about losing trick count for overcalls, but... That was, uh, that was an interesting comment that he made. A club of spade. Um, that's not the best bid for your side. So do I double them? I think a negative double to show hearts. Okay, yes. 
Is it possible that your partner has four hearts? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, that's not a good bid. So if you want to change the overcall, see if I don't have a fit with your diamonds, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna go back to spades. So if you want to change my overcall, number one, you need to have at least a five card suit. Number two, you should always have 10 points, especially at the two level. And number three, you should have tolerance for my suit in case I have to rebid my suit because I don't have a fit with you and you don't have tolerance. Tolerance means two card support. So you just have to pass and see what happens. And remember that this is a negative double, it's not a penalty double. So club, clubs should, should incorporate this system of learning. I mean, like a little voice in your whispering in your ear, that's not <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't, uh, I don't have a bid. Well, <laughs> well, the thing is, you know, your partner has four. So you might have to bid two hearts with this hand. All right. You can't bid no trump. You can't bid spades. Um, so I'm going to pass. I'm off the hook. Thank goodness. <laughs> and your partner's got a little mini hand, so she's going to pass. Yeah, so I'm on the hook. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you open the bidding. <laughs> So, and this is what happens when um, the opponents overcall a good five card major, you can get into a little bit of trouble. So what am I going to lead? I'm going to lead the king of spades. Ah. And now you see, what you have to remember is that north and south don't know that Judy's only got four hearts. And Kathy is, she's thinking that I only have one because she can be out as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see. See, I don't believe that she has another trump left. I can see the cards, but I don't know that. But she just played the two of diamonds. Um, that's a really, I, I don't like that card at all. Don't you want me to lead a diamond? <laughs> Play the king of diamonds. Play the king of diamonds. So the king of diamonds, you would never ever throw away the king of diamonds, even if it was singleton, because there'd always be the hope that you would get it. So the king, discarding the king like that 
says, go ahead and play diamonds. She knows I've got the ace. I pitched the seven. I pitched a high diamond. So this tells me that I can go ahead and play my diamonds. See, she had the two. Why did she throw the king? She must have the queen. I should have taken my ace of clubs. You you trumped my good trick, partner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, I, I should have taken my ace of clubs too. You got it. So okay. So it made two hearts. So we all learned a lot from this. That when partner made a negative double, even if you've only got three, you might have to bid it because you had no other bid. Mm -hmm. And yet she's got a perfectly normal um, one club opener. And Marissa, you know, she could have bid one no trump. She could have passed to see what her partner did. And maybe she's good enough to pass the double, a uh, reopening double. Um, but she chose to show her four hearts, which I think is right. And um, anyway, Judy made two hearts, so a very good board. Okay, we'll probably have time for one more board. Oh, I'm the dealer. So I, I bet I'm gonna have problems on this hand. <laughs> when I'm three, three, um, with most of my partners, I always open a club. With some, I play that one club could be as few as two, so that if I open a diamond, I guarantee four. Uh, according to the rule of 20, I can open. Well, you're overcalling because I already bid. I mean, I overcalling, yeah. So I go with this. But that's a terrible bid. Okay, so. You have no tricks in your suit. No, that's so, our partnership agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, good. But it, okay, I pass, fine. Yeah. I think pass is better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to open with the rule of 20, but I'm not opening, I'm over calling, as you said. <laughs> So um, what does that bid say? I think you're better off to bid one diamond. One diamond, you know, just lets me take a bid. I'll bid one spade. And now, now you can, no, not two spades. Now you can bid two clubs if you like. I hate for you to raise me with only three spades. Okay. So this tells me you've got a really bad hand. You're probably four, four in the minors. Mm -hmm. Nowhere to go. So it's a pity, I cannot bid, no? Well, now you could bounce. No, I. So we should never let us play at the two level when we're happy. 
So we certainly found a little fit in clubs and you have nothing in clubs. Your partner might have something in clubs, you just don't know, so two hearts. Kathy, good, thank goodness. Yeah, I was gonna say, that didn't look like a happy fit to me when you're in three suits, two suits, right? three. Settle on the other one. Yeah. There is a question. Yes, go ahead. Instead of the one diamond, this person wants to know, why not one no Trump? Well, some people might bid one no Trump, but you have you have all your points in clubs and nothing at all in the majors. So I would want to stay away from one no Trump. Good luck, Marissa. Thank you. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we're not going to play this all the way out, but you can see that you're going to lose three hearts, mm -hmm. no spades, one diamond one club with any luck mm -hmm. so what did i say three hearts and a diamond and a club so you're probably going to make a lot of hearts mm -hmm. but you don't have many points you've got marissa has 10 and judy has nine but you've got an eight card heart fit and we have nothing we're going to lose three spades and um, we're going to lose king of clubs and we're going to lose two diamonds. It's a very ugly hand. <laughs> okay, everybody. Well, I have a lot of thank yous to say. So first